Open Writers Club. We are having our writing workshop today. Today's date is January 26th. 27th. 27th. My... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> January 27th, 2018. We are over here at the north side. East End. End. Y'all know what? We're not going to do no edits on this video, okay? So mistakes are just going to be like bloopers, okay? We are over at the East End Library, 25th Street. We meet over here once a month, okay? So we're going to get started and we're going to talk about copyrights, ISBN numbers, and publishing. To get started first, copyrights. I always advise everybody from what I've learned over the past two and a half years, go to www.copyrights.gov. When you go to copyrights.gov, it's going to explain to you about single registration, which is $35 as long as you do it online. It's also going to um, explain single paper registration, which is a paper form that you can have mailed to you or you can print it out, you fill it out, you mail it back in. That price is going to be $85. Now, I'm not sure why there's such a big difference in the prices. I'm assuming that the prices are so different because you're doing one, one online instead of filling out a form, you know, a paper form. So whichever one makes you feel better and you're more comfortable at, please do. This is your copyright. Fill it out. Send it back in with the amount. If you do it online, you can pay it online with um, PayPal or credit card, debit card, etc. If not, you also can send a money order or a check if you do the paper part mm -hmm. for copyright.gov. But I would advise everybody go to www.copyrights.gov to know your rights when it comes to any trade, books, um, anything that you want to know. Even on down to a phrase. Shall I rise? And you know, I don't want to say this my Angela, I think it's her, but I'm not sure. But shall I rise? And let's say she wanna trademark that phrase. Go to copyright.gov, go to trademark.gov and read up on those laws. Okay. Were there any other questions, Ms. Diane, you have for the copyright part? Well, when once you said uh, about the uh, single paper thing, mm -hmm. I get I uh, assume that um, I thought maybe because they send you a copy of it is why it was more, but that didn't have anything to do with oh, it. Oh no, it's just that yeah, you either it's, get paper or you do the online. Yes, ma'am. And usually online is cheaper anyway. And that's what I'm thinking because they're thinking they're saving trees. Mm -hmm. But you know, for me, if, if the paper, for the first time I did one, I did the paper because even though I may have understood what was going on online. I wanted <laughs> to look at that paper yeah. and make sure if I made any mistakes, okay. I could go ahead, you know, just have somebody look over that paper. Part. So I did the paper the first time. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that if you're not comfortable with it, print it out, have somebody look over it first. Y'all go over it together, then fill it out and send it in. Oh, okay. Just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. And another thing I meant to cover too when it comes to the copy. If more than one person, that like we're talking about books, if more than one person has helped to write that book, everybody who wrote that book, their name needs to be on there. I mean, you can choose not to put their name on, that'd be up to you. But their name should be on there legally so there won't be any issues because they all of them had a voice in that book. They wrote the book which is what a lot of people have issues with when they're writing books with three or four people. Mm -hmm. You have one person say, I contributed more. Doesn't matter how much you contributed, it's the fact that mm -hmm. three or four people have to write this book and three or four people should have copyrights. Mm -hmm. And when you go to copyrights.gov, there's a place where you put everybody's name, everybody's information for this registration, okay? You can do that. Oh, I know people think that copyright for whatever it is, whether it's records or whatever, just means that we have the right to the money. Does it, does it go much further than that? Or oh, yes, ma'am. That's mainly it. Oh, no, ma'am. Copyrights go further than that. Okay. Um, I'll give you an example. My book, 
my DIY Kim's Do It Yourself Guide is self publishing. Mm -hmm. um, my paperback book is copyrighted. Okay. But it was copyrighted even before I sent the money in for this right here. Mm -hmm. Technically, your stuff is copyrighted when you sit down and you start writing Kim. Uh -huh. It's copyrighted. Okay. You know, you can prove, especially nowadays, especially on a computer right. or a piece of paper, you can prove that you did this. Yeah. So it's copyrighted then. Mm -hmm. So when you upload it or have a company print for you, guess what? Right. That's a that's even more copyrighted. Okay. okay. Copyright copyright protection. Oh, okay. even more. Okay. Now my DIY book, the issues that I'm having, and I think I I was sharing some of it with you. Yeah. Somebody online, they bought a print copy of my DIY book. Right. Kim's Do It Yourself Guide to Self Publishing. Yes. Mm -hmm. They bought a print copy. They copied that print copy, scanned it, and turned it into a PDF. Mm -hmm. They are now selling my book online. Mm -hmm. And I sent them a cease and desist, mm -hmm. letting them know that the book is copyrighted, the information inside is copyrighted. Right. Because I came up with it. This is the original manuscript. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. My original manuscript. And this manuscript, this is the one that I sent off that had added. <laughs> so you're going to see notes and everything else. So this is the original one. When I saw that, I was disappointed that somebody would do that, but we know that we do have um, what you call pirates, uh -huh. who, I mean, they still have it, from CDs to all of them. When somebody steals your copyrighted information, you can send them a form. You download it from copyrights.gov. It's a DC. Uh, I, I apologize because I can't remember the, the full name, mm -hmm. but it's basically to let them know that this is your legal work, mm -hmm. and that you were asking them to cease and desist with selling it right. and remove it from their website. Okay, that's what I did to that website. That website jumped to another website. Mm -hmm. Okay, IP address changed. Now, from that stage, what I'm going to end up doing, I was advised to send um, a copy of my cease and desist to every IP address that I know of, which is okay. what I'm doing now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know it's going to be hard to catch these individuals. Right. You know, they already um, get it. Yeah. But I'm going to send one to everybody. I mean, you have to. That, that's, I, it, to me, it just seems illegal, but they it, didn't do it. That way. It is. And my thing was, if I could sit down and write the book, I'm telling you how my journey with writing, you know, was. My book is only, what, $3.99 on Amazon as an e book. Mm -hmm. It's on $10 to print. That's a writer's gold mine. That, that's, and yeah. if you come in and sit down for our book club and workshops, yeah. the information is free. Okay. Okay. You know, because we share all the tidbits. And one of the reasons I wrote the book because it was so hard to get information from people. They wouldn't share. They wouldn't share or there was some angle involved, you know. You don't want to share or you want, oh, just come on on board. Yeah, yeah. No, how can you share a little information? Exactly. So even though I'm selling my DIY book for print version, mm -hmm. I also offer, if you come inside, mm -hmm. all of that's free because we learn it together. So next I'm gonna discuss ISBN numbers. Okay. And I'm gonna grab my book because I can never say them numbers. <laughs> what the letters stand for? Oh, okay. oh, okay. I never knew what that is. And I may not have wrote it all down, but majority of people know what ISBN, you know what it is. It's just a matter of what the letters stand for. <laughs> which drives me crazy. It, that drives me crazy too. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what the letters stand for right now because I can't, memory is not working. What I can tell you is that your ISBN, I'm going to read this off. Your ISBN numbers are used to identify your book in whatever format. That means whether your book is an e book, print book, audio book, you have to have. Um, ISBN number. Mm -hmm. The new ISBN numbers now are 13 digits. Mm -hmm. 
if you have, I have a print book and an ebook for um, Kim's Do It Yourself Guide to Self Publishing. Mm-hmm. My print book and ebook both have different ISDN numbers. Because you have to have a different number for each format. Okay. And what I did, I listed prices right here. One ISDN is one twenty-five. Mm-hmm. Ten ISDN numbers is two ninety-five. One hundred ISDN numbers is five hundred and seventy-five dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, this is what I say. This is just my personal opinion. I tell people save up and go after the ten. Right. Because you know you want a print book. And you want an ebook. Save up and go after the 10. Okay. That's going to give you how many books during the course of, how, depending on how fast you write. The 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can publish one book two different ways or three different ways. Okay. I've never thought of it like mm-hmm. that. Okay. Your ISBN numbers, you're going to end up using more than one. If you look in the inside mm-hmm. of your book, Look in there and see if you see um, two numbers, two 13 digit numbers. Yeah. That means, because you said that your publishers, they sent the books to Amazon right. as an ebook, and they have a print edition. They have to have two different numbers for both. So that's what this is. This is the um, yes, This is the numbers right here. For the public. For the, what is that? Well, this is digital, yeah. and this is print. Here's the print. Oh, um, yes, nice. The PBK is print book. Digital is for your ebook okay. and two different numbers. Okay. And see, when you did your book, if you count your numbers, mm-hmm. you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. The thirteen digit numbers, from what I learned last year, they just started a few okay. years ago. Okay. I guess they ran out of the ten or the eight they were using at first. Oh, okay. So now they're up to the thirteen. And that's another thing. Mm-hmm. If you go to www. My identifiers, M Y I D E N T I F I E R S dot com. You'll find all the information you need about your ISBNs. This is the legitimate site for ISBN numbers. You go to them, and when you go to them, you're going to see B O W K E R, Bowker dot. I say Bowker, it could be Bowker. Dot com, okay. you know, Bowker, my identifier, identifier is one of the same. Okay. You go to them, you set up an account. As in my case, I have a writer's account, but I also have a publisher's account because I'm self-published. Mm-hmm. My um, one that I need to bring the laptop. I'm gonna show you my screen as a publisher. Mm-hmm. All of my stuff is set up that you see my ISBN. You see how I've used them, whether I, whether or not I've used my ISBN numbers as an ebook. I'll sign whichever um, format as ebook. Okay. Then I'll sign one as print. I haven't done audio yet. Um, audio is next. So my motivation, my first book, she will eventually go with audio, and I have a um, ISBN number. So when I go on to my um, my account page, you're gonna see ebook, print, audio. I know there's about an eight gallon or something. <laughs> so you'll see ebook, print, audio, and you'll see that each of them have a different 13 digit ISBN number. These numbers help people locate your book. Libraries, and that's whether you're with the Library of Congress or not. Okay. If you go into a library and that 13 digit number, the ISBN number is put in, it helps people locate your book. These numbers help people find authors. If you can't, you can't remember the author's name, but you have the actual 13 digit IS, ISBN number, you can type that in, mm-hmm. it'll populate that book for you in a search engine. The ISBN number also lets you know who wrote the book, who wrote the book, who published the book, it, and when the year, date, time, stamp, everything, when it was published. Oh, okay. This number is so 
important. Like a credit card. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this number is, to me, this is like the grail. Yes. It honestly is right. This is like the grail. This is most important. And I'm sorry that I can't remember international standard. Uh, I can't remember what the BNN stands for, but I'm going to come back. And that right there I have. But just remember, this is so important. If you don't research anything else, research ISB. It's an importance to publishers and writers. You know, and if you go into a big publishing house, you know that when your publishing house um, gets the ISB, they put you down as a writer, author, which you want, and they put themselves down as the publisher. Well, this almost it kind of puts me in the mind of it. The things that's on groceries, what the cold mm-hmm. thing. So yes, that's it. it. And Once what you they get do. that, then that's that's you. Took so your book on? Yeah. Your okay. barcode. That's yes, ma'am. Okay. Because guess what? When you go inside the store or the library, they scan that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's the importance of that. Yeah. It is so important. I would never. I never even thought that. Very important. And you can even buy your own barcodes. Publishers buy their own barcodes. I buy my own barcode. Barcode, and I didn't think about adding that because <laughs> I was focused on the ISDN, but they right. but they do go together. Okay. Now, your barcodes. I'm gonna step over here. Most barcodes will run you twenty five dollars. If you do a print book through Create Space, you can ask Create Space. So just go ahead, use your number. You've purchased the ISBN. Mm-hmm. Let them go ahead and do the barcode fight. Okay. And they'll do the barcode fight. I'm going to show you an example of that. The same fee per book or? or it's one, a, it's one only fee. one fee. Okay. One fee. Okay. Create space. I purchased my own ISBN number. Mm-hmm. And I had them do the barcode fight. Okay. Okay. And you don't, it's. One time fee. Mm-hmm. Every book that I order or every book that someone orders, yeah. you're going to see that barcode. Okay. If you run that ISBN um, number in, you're going to see the author and the publisher. Mm-hmm. And the name should match since, hey, yeah. Kim Walker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I had Create Space do it for me for that one, mm-hmm. because like I said, as I was learning, I had so much trouble doing this barcode myself, mm-hmm. putting it on the hook. Because I did, you know, I, I do my own covers. Yeah. But I had a devil of a time getting that thing on there. So oh, I figured it was okay. easier to just yeah. let them do it. Yeah. Because okay. I already had my numbers and stuff. Okay. And like I said, I, I love Create Space. I've had no problems with them. I hope that even though Amazon has purchased them, that they keep everything separate because I feel that they do excellent business. Okay. Excellent. And I hope they stay just the way they are. Because I got two more books I'm trying to drop this year. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so we've covered copyrights, ISBNs, and I'm going to go ahead and go over a little bit of publishing. Mm-hmm. Publishing is one of the ones that I think all of us try to figure out. Right. Do I self publish or do I do brick and mortar? Mm-hmm. I think it depends upon the person what you want to do, what you're looking to accomplish. I think that if you feel like you may not have enough time to do the marketing, because you, you, know, you know what, let me change that. You have to do some marketing, even if you do brick and mortar. Right. But you won't have to do as much, because that brick and mortar building will do your marketing for you when it comes to publishing. So that's one of the benefits of going to a publishing house. They're going to do your marketing. They're going to hire people to do your editing, your proofreading, your beta reading. They're going to work out and do your um your book cover. Yeah. You'll have you know a voice and say so, but they're going to help you do all the big stuff. Okay. Now, when you self-publish, the difference is you are going to have to go around and find these people okay. to do your editing, your beta reading. Your proofreading, <laughs> your um, book cover, you know, and let's say even on down to your format, if you're not comfortable formatting your book, mm-hmm. you're gonna have to do all that. Okay. You know, your marketing, all of it, you're gonna have to do. 
the brick and mortar buildings have tables and resources, you know, yeah. to get all that done. Right. And that's the only difference that I really see. Yeah. Is that right there? Okay. Yeah, I just assume when I dealt with the publisher, yeah, there was like some kind of assembly line. It went from this person to that mm-hmm. person to other. And then I thought if I did it myself, where am I gotta be running all over town to do that? And yeah. I thought that's what I didn't know, you yeah. know, wow. Is that is, is it really like that? Are you going from place to place trying to you, find somebody? You won't have to, but you're also but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to hunt. You're gonna have to hunt for good people. Good and it's gonna be trial and error. You know, like I said, my motivation. She's not a great book. Okay. She's been out for a couple of years now. But I went through four or five editors. And for that little book to go through that many people, dedication, I only went through two. Okay. And the two that I went through, they weren't perfect, but guess what? They pulled it together better than the so-called "quote unquote" educators who worked on my motivation. Okay. So, as a, and I'm self-published, so I have to look for these people, and then I have to cross my fingers that I get good people. That when I come and I pay you four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, that you gonna do what you say you're gonna do? <laughs> you're gonna do. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. And, and that's the biggest thing. Yes. Okay. So when you come to self-publishing, you gotta you gotta do it yourself, you know. Okay. And I can't say this one is better than the other because even with brick and mortar, I heard horror story, mm-hmm. and I heard people say that it's not, no, you know, it's not the same, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not well that it is similar, but it's not the same as in you don't have a problem because mm-hmm. you do sometimes run into issues. Yeah. So you self publishing, you just have to think about whether or not you also have the time. Mm-hmm. Because if you work nine to five, and I'm gonna tell you how to write when you get off. Yeah. But one of the things I've noticed too, that's an excuse. Mm-hmm. And I say that that's my personal opinion when it comes to that. Yeah. Because if I could write and I wrote and I work seventy hours a week and I work weekends, mm-hmm. I, a lot of times you would find me at Lucille Brown on a Saturday and a Sunday, mm-hmm. working in the guidance department doing work. Okay. But guess what? Yeah. When I came home, I actually took time to write. Yeah. Now that I'm home recuperating, I'm writing more. Yeah. So it, it is an excuse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So just think about it. Self-publishing and brick and mortar. You have to weigh what, what it is you want to do and what it is you have time to do. And I'm going to make another point on marketing when it comes to publishing here. With marketing, everybody has to market. Everybody. Even brick and mortar. They have to market your published work in order for it to sell. Self-publish. We have to market our books in order for them to sell. Because guess what? If we don't, they're not going to sell. Right. So everybody has to market. And I would say that even people who do brick and mortar, you still market. Yeah. You market along with your brick and mortar because that's even more recognition. So still market. Do both. Yep. Do both. So that's where, like you said, the, the I'll call it book shows and things like yes, that come in where mm-hmm. you just got to get up and try to go and do it. Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether you think they're going to sell or not. Yes, ma'am. They get on board and do that. And what you do also, too. Um, find a buddy. Mm-hmm. Find a buddy that you could go ahead and y'all can get maybe a vending table together. That's one of the things that I did. You know, um, me and Allie, we should, Allie does cameras. Mm-hmm. I do books. We do tables together. Okay. Yeah. Me and um, with Nicholas, yeah. we've done tables together. We've had three people at tables. Mm-hmm. Find a buddy mm-hmm. and start off slow. You don't have to do a table by yourself because these tables are big enough when you do events that oh, you can sure. share. Yes, mm-hmm. man, you can share some things. But this gets you out there. While you out there at those events, you're passing out business cards, you're talking to people about your books, yeah. your confidence is building. Right. Right. Your recognition is yeah. building. Exactly. And those are two of the biggest things, that confidence and that recognition. Everything else will fall in line. Because I've gotten better and better. 
I don't stutter as bad now when she videotapes me and I don't fall out the oh, yeah. You know, I've gotten a whole lot better. <laughs> the world of the internet. I yes, ma'am. Feel like all of that is just, just so nervous about that. Oh, God, I got to get in front of people. Uh-huh. But, but you do that. But you do you that for what you love. You put yourself uh-huh. out there as it is. You do that for what that's you love. That's, yeah. that's good. I can't tell you what you doesn't have anything to do with speaking of, but I was so naive as to think that every time a person wrote a book, that it went straight to the left. <laughs> Oh, man. I did not know. Mm-hmm. So when I asked about it, and the girl said, here, when I tell you what I'll do, I'll take the book. If you want to donate it, mm-hmm. I'll take the book, and I'll talk to you and give it to the, uh, whoever the head of the library or whatever, mm-hmm. and see if they let them review it, see if they want to use it. So I kept asking, kept asking, and then finally the guy told me, he said, well, what? No, it's not that fast of a process. It can take it's, almost six months. That's what he said. It's a long process. Mm-hmm. And he said, the library buys Mm-hmm. That, that they decide that they want to sell. Now, then I'm getting kind of, you know, angry because I'm like, I'm looking at books on the shelf that they were. <laughs> you know? they got because you have, you have a lot of people that realize, yeah. hey, big publishing companies, what yeah. do they do? Yeah. They're going to send this library because mm-hmm. you have, um, what's the big um library? It's a digital site, worldcat.com. Oh, okay. It's what every library in the okay. country you. Okay. So guess what publishing companies are going to do? We're going to go ahead and send 10 books to this library. We're going to send 10 to everybody in that district. They're free. Right. right. Because we want them right. to put them in their system and recommend them to the other libraries who are going to purchase them right. okay. for their district. And it's still that same. Uh-huh. And, see, and, and that's the stuff that, you know, I'm self-published. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that yet. I've, I've donated books to libraries. And I appreciate the ones that pick them up. Yeah. I'm what? I'm in three libraries here in Richmond. Those are four. I'm in one in North Carolina. Okay. okay. Young lady called me about a year ago. Of course, I'll send you a book. I will pay for postage. Mm-hmm. I got all this. I will just send you the book. I'm yeah. like, you know, I was cheating with me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I told anybody else you want, let me know. I can donate a book, get it on the shelf. Yeah. Because my goal is. When they see it, they read it, they may decide, hey, you guys, I'm recommending this book. Can y'all buy two, three books for y'all never? Right. Okay. And that's what I'm looking at. Well, that's a whole other thing on the side. <laughs> that's my, that's my, I would never I want. thought that it went that far. You know, you know I was thinking in terms of somebody going in the bookstore. Oh, oh I think I'll see what that's about, buying it. That's it. And, you know, you know, know, and that's it. Look at your bookstores. Yeah. You yeah. have bookstores that. You can donate them a book. Mm-hmm. The book may not be the right fit for them. Yeah. Okay. Then you have other bookstores. You're surprised because they're the ones that tell you, "Hey, I'm gonna buy five of your books to put in my store." Mm-hmm. And when they sell, you know how they sell, we can negotiate and buy five or six more. Okay. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's something right there. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just I just had a bookstore. Last summer, mm-hmm. my motivation, mm-hmm. it wasn't what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Wasn't tight enough. But, you know, I guess it was a little bit, you know. Because well, okay. this is my era. Because I'm saying, say, why? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, she, she says some people didn't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. The owner of the bookstore said she liked it. Mm-hmm. But the other people said that they felt the writing was too big and the white space and stuff like that. And that's okay, fine. Because yeah. people, are, you know, their opinion. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. You know, and no, I'm not gonna change the cover and put no. certain things on there because that's not why I wrote the book. That's not what you wanted that either. No. But I took her advice, mm-hmm. and when I did this one, and everybody know I do my own stuff, I'm proud. Okay, just like Bob. Uh huh. Yeah. I just made it a little bit small. Yeah. But I also made it small enough that I can read it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't care about you're saying that the masses. Yeah. It's too big. It's too big to hook. I care about the fact of making yeah. sure that when somebody picks it up, you can read it from this distance. Yeah. Whether you got glasses on or yeah, not. Nothing I hate worse. I mean, especially for my Thank generation. You. No. You know, some, some, of the books, some of the books we read like right this. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to make sure that when you push it to the side, I can read this with or without these baffles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can actually read this. Mm-hmm. I can't read it if it's all the way over there. Oh, right. But yeah, <laughs> you can. You, 
looking um, at it and, and the low light is low or whatever. Yes, you ma'am. And that's what I'm going to the book still. I took her criticism to heart. And she even asked me to send that book back with this one. Mm-hmm. And I haven't done it yet. I may not. Mm-hmm. Because I realize, and I'm not going to do that on this video, that we have panels mm-hmm. that sometimes our people can be the worst when it comes to our stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're more interested in promoting the TNA mm-hmm. instead of promoting something that's more positive and right. uplifting. Right. Because right. we all write different things. Different yeah. genres, yeah. you know, yeah. and sometimes it takes a little. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's been really been helpful. And um, yeah, I'll just go on. Like I said before, I'm fired up now to try to, you know, yeah. finish writing what I was gonna write, and um, keep writing, just give me more writing. information and stop being lazy about uh, getting on the internet and trying to find out some of this information for myself. Set your and, and get you a tablet and understand it. If not, I'll just bring it back here so you can explain <laughs> it to me. I'll print it out because and go from there. I but work with everything. Very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Well, I'm glad and I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, guys, this is Kim Walton with Southside Book and Writers Club. We are about to close up our writing workshop for January 27th, 2018. I want to thank everybody who's watching, and I hope that you learned something today. Hope you guys can hear me because the throat is still a little tight. But if you have questions, you can go to Facebook at Southside Book and Writers Club, and you can leave us a message and we will respond. Or you can, I didn't write my email down. Or you can email me at Kim underscore Walton at Yahoo.com, and I do respond. I have a three-day turnaround, but I do respond back to you with any questions that you have. The information, like I said, is free. You know, information is free, 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 free. <laughs> so if you come and join the book club, you can either join the book club to write and review books or just come in once a month for the workshops and gain valuable knowledge on how to publish a book, how to protect your rights, how to purchase ISBN numbers or what they are. Knowledge is power, people. And again, if you like this video, please share, share, share. This is Kim with Southside Book and Writers Club. Much peace and love. We out.